Hello and welcome to another Fantasy Premier League video. My name is Steve and in my last video I hadn't quite decided on what I was going to do with Semenyo for this next run of three fixtures as I do have one of my three free transfers still remaining as yesterday I did spend two of those transfers on selling Mohamed Salah to bring in Phil Foden for these two very nice city fixtures. And I've also ditched Jao Pedro to upgrade him all the way up to Solanke in order to jump on Spurs' very nice attacking run of fixtures. And having discussed uh, bringing Foden in in the last video, a question came through from at user HT8BR3FY1F. You may need to upgrade or change your name there, mate. It's a bit of a mouthful, but... He was a little bit worried about Foden's minutes moving forward. And I do know that he's not alone in this worry. And so I will go through some of the reasons, footballing reasons, as to why managers decide to rotate their players to hopefully shine a little bit of light <clears throat> on how the top teams or the top managers choose their lineups each week. So remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, especially if you get any value out of the following content. All right, so we'll start off with the city rotation. There's definitely a bit of fear in the community around owning Man City players. And so I thought it'd be a good idea to go through a few points about what managers have to consider when they are selecting their team sheet each week. Now, this is various things that I have picked up from uh, being in locker rooms <laughs> my whole life and hearing what the manager is telling um, us as squads, but also from reading between the lines and post-match press conferences from the Premier League managers and all sorts um, throughout the years of watching football. Now, what does seem to be a little known fact out in the community is that most of the top squads typically only have two players for each position in their squad with Man City being really no different apart from the fact that the backup player um, in each position is actually a really good player and so those players often do get rotated in. Now managers have to ensure that they do rotate their squads not only to make sure that players don't get too fatigued especially when there's so much football being played by the these premier league teams but also so that players don't get stuck on the bench losing their match fitness losing their touch and of course so they don't end up getting depressed or frustrated from being stuck on the bench week after week now some positions barely rotate now the obvious ones here are keepers unless of course you are Roberto De Zerbi who seems to rotate his keepers very frequently but also first choice center back partnerships basically also never rotate because they are the last line of defense and they very much have to be um, accustomed to what their partner is likely to do in any given situation and so you quite often see centre-back partnerships being very resolute and hardly ever rotating. But for the rest of the positions in the team, they can obviously rotate quite frequently. So what are some of the reasons? Well, first of all, is form. Typically, the players that are playing the best football will start every game. Now, this shouldn't come as much of a surprise, but it does, uh, it does, I do see a lot of comments of um, people being worried about someone being rotated out of the squad when they're playing outstanding football, and I think that is probably a little bit overlooked. It's probably also because there's a lot of analytics managers out there that are just looking at the numbers and not actually sitting down to watch the 90 minutes of football. And the numbers don't always give you an indication of exactly how well in form a player is or isn't. So eye test is still very key for me here. 
Now forwards also don't rate, rotate as often when they're scoring goals. So you don't really want to break their rhythm and you want to capitalize on their confidence and current run of form. Doesn't really even matter who they've scored against either. Yeah, if they score a goal against a really low league team in an FA Cup match, it really makes no difference to the player. They've scored a goal and they just, when you're in that sort of confident um, streak, just things happen better on the pitch. Much like in poker on a on a, a, a on the on the felt, if you run and if you hit a few hands in a row, it's typically actually quite good to keep going because uh, that confidence does actually play out on the felt. Another thing that is uh, has to be managed quite closely is how many kilometers each player is traveling per match. And of course, uh, those managers that are very heavily focused on sports science um, will be um, will be monitoring this very closely. I mean, someone like Declan Rice is probably, I mean, I think he ends up covering probably the most amount of kilometers of any Premier League player, but he will play week on week on week because some players just have the genetics that lets them recover quickly and allows them to do that for 90 minutes week on week, even in the midweek matches. So there are a few people out there that have really good genes that allows them to do that. But for the general rule of thumb, if you're if you're traveling like eight, nine kilometers in a 90 minute match and then have to play again midweek and then again on the weekend, that does catch up with most players very quickly. But also age definitely comes into it as older players have longer recovery recovery times. So again, those players that are, you know, 26, 27, 28 is starting to get up there for the larger distances. Um, you could often see like 30 year olds like play week on week on week if they're not in a position that actually requires them to do a lot of distance. And so definitely keep an eye on what kind of kilometers those players are tracking. Now those are just some general rules of thumb, but not, none of that has anything to do with the system being deployed by each manager either. So managers will also rotate their players if they're forced into playing a different formation given the personnel that may be available to them that week. Typically though, managers will try to adjust the formation and style of play based on the players available and the fact, and trying to fit in as many of their first choice starters. And so it really does come down to the combination of attributes that each player offers. Now I think, now, that's not an extensive list. <laughs> there are definitely other things that can come into it, but hopefully that provides a little bit more insight into why managers tend to rotate. And I'll often use this list as, the, as a guideline to help predict starting lineups. Now onto Foden's minutes specifically. Now, the question came in that they were, they were worried about um, Foden being at risk. And there's also a bit of comments going around that people are more worried that Foden's going to be at risk when KDB is back fit and available. And he's actually due back sometime either this weekend or in the next couple of game weeks. And so it's something else that I thought we would cover here. Now... I'm actually way less worried about this as there have been plenty of matches last season where both Foden and KDB have been on the pitch, both of them playing in the, that dual cam role. Typically what was happening there was KDB was more your box-to-box -box midfielder playing as a probably more of an eight slash 10 with a few six responsibilities. And so I actually think it's Gundogan that'll be more at risk when KDB is back fit and available. And last season, 
if you looked at how Foden was playing, there was just, I had no fear whatsoever in Odin owning Foden last season. Everyone was worried about his rotation. He was just completely in form, dominating the center of the pitch. And if he starts to do that again this season, and I think he'll just nail down that spot and continue to play week on week up until the, um, those weeks where there are some important midweek Champions League fixtures that they um, that are coming up. So, Pep's ideal formation typically result, revolves around having two cam players, so that's two tens in behind Haaland, and he typically wants a left-footed cam player playing on the right. So this is Foden's main position. And he also wants a right-footed player playing on the left side of the dual cam role. And that is typically KDB when he is fit and available. But this is the role that Gundogan has been filling in <clears throat> for the last couple of game weeks. So Gundogan has been playing the box-to-box -box midfielder role, which does mean that he has to cover much more distance on the pitch. And Gundogan is also an older player, and so I think he is even more at risk of being rotated with KDB, leaving Foden as one of those players that can typically play week on week, back to back, and usually seems to recover quite quickly. So... I think Foden's main competition is probably Bernardo Silva, as he can play that inside cam role on the right-hand side being a left-footed player. With Bernardo Silva being used more of a winger, though, so typically when he's playing in that, in that role, you'd start him out on the right of midfield and when in possession of the ball he would tuck inside it to be the dual cam and you'd usually have someone like walker coming up on the outside of him hot to hold width or at some points last season i think even rika lewis was doing that role whereas this season rika lewis is very much playing a cdm type role He's barely even inverting. I don't think he's actually got a lot of right back's responsibilities. And with Rodri out of the picture for the whole season, I think Lewis is just going to be in that CDM position week on week alongside Kovacic with a small chance of rotation um, from Mateus Nunez, probably around when those midweek fixtures come about. And when Walker has been on the pitch, he hasn't actually been venturing very far forward either. He has typically been staying back as the right centre-back of a back three uh, when he has been on the pitch. And so I don't actually see a lot of threat from Bernardo Silva taking over Foden's role. So I'm not really actually too worried about Foden at all. So I have brought Foden in. I think he definitely plays this week. He's got a small chance of rotating over the coming weeks, but I really don't see too much in it. All right, so that just leaves Semenyo. So to catch you up from where I left off in my last video, when I bought Semenyo in in order to accommodate both Harla, all three of Haaland, Saka and Sulla in the team, I did know that I was going to have to set, um, I was going to have to sell one of my premiums in order to upgrade some menu for this run of three fixtures. Um, but Semenyo has been playing really well um, over these last run of fixtures. He hasn't quite been pulling in as many returns as what I would have hoped. However, he was robbed of an assist in that Southampton match a couple of game weeks ago due to the goal being awarded to, I think it was Odango, who was standing in the mixer uh, when Cook took his shot from the edge of the 18, went through a pile of bodies, deflected off Diang Odango and went in the goal and actually awarded the goal to Odango and that ended up giving Cook the assist when it was actually Semenya that passed the ball to Cook. Now, I completely understand why this has happened, but if he didn't quite catch a dangle on the way through, that would have been an assist for Semenyo. 
and he had already scored in that game as well and so it pretty much would have been a six point assist had that been awarded he also scored against Liverpool I think it was the first five or ten minutes of that game but it was in fact disallowed or offside so Semenyo is very much getting in and amongst it <clears throat> and I am tentative about selling him but Arsenal and City in the next three fixtures is really tough going and although Semenyo does have it in him to score in these games I think the odds of double digit returns are very low. Now Semenyo does have some really nice fixtures from game week 11 onwards so I bring up my fixture ticker down here I mean, Arsenal at home, Villa away, and City at home are the three fixtures that I am trying to avoid. <clears throat> but in game week 11, Bournemouth have a really nice run of fixtures. Brentford away, Brighton at home, Wolves away. I mean, all three of those teams have been and can, will be shipping goals over the coming weeks. Tottenham at home is a little bit tricky, but Tottenham's defense hasn't been resolute and then they have Ipswich away and West Ham at home I mean it's a really nice run for Bournemouth so I do have a couple of options of what I could do here one is of course to sell Semenyo and to jump on okay so I should probably preface this with I'm really only looking at replacements um, from the Fulham camp at the moment as Fulham's run of fixtures are also really nice. They have very similar fixtures to what Bournemouth do from that game week 11 run that I just read out. So Fulham have Aston Villa at home this week in game week 8, which is a bit of a tricky fixture, but Fulham have actually uh, turned my head a little bit, having watched them this season. I did discount them earlier on, but they have been putting together some performances recently. And so I very much think that Fulham can score one or even two to three goals against Aston Villa this week. They then have Everton away, Brentford at home, Palace away and Wolves at home. And I just see heaps of goals over this run, that run of four fixtures. And so for the five fixtures in total, I can totally see Fulham putting away some goals. So my two options are to sell Semenyo to Emil Smith-Rowe, who I am aware was just benched uh, last week in that city fixture but I think well there that just goes back to my earlier comments about why some teams rotate and I think what happened here is Fulham just went out with a much more defensive setup benching one of their better attackers and they were probably looking to hopefully keep the score down maybe even get to like 60 70 minutes in the match at like nil nil or one nil and then bring on someone like Emil Smith Rowe to hopefully run around with full um, full amount of energy to try and steal some goals at the end of the game. Now, I don't foresee Emile Smith-Rowe getting rotated in any of these next five fixtures, but when it comes to game week 13, 15 and 16, where they have to play Tottenham away, Arsenal at home and Liverpool away, Emile Smith-Rowe could be uh, the sacrificial lamb in order for Fulham to put out a bit more of a defensive lineup and so buying Emile Smith Rowe will very much only be for the next five game weeks. The other alternative that I do have or did have was potentially to sell Stewart and go all the way up to Raul Jimenez. However, uh, actually someone did mention this in the comments. Sorry I haven't got back to you all on the comments. I was busy hacking away with the website which you can actually see has changed in colors again we've actually updated the colors of the opponents to not be green because green kind of made it feel like they were all easy games or something so website's still taking shape which i will get back to the comments after this video but uh where was i a bit of a tangent there uh Jimenez. so in order to go Stewart up to Jimenez, I would have had to sacrifice on either Solanke or Foden. And they were actually my two priority transfers. And I didn't want to negotiate on either of those two in order to squeeze Jimenez in. And now that I've done that, I don't actually have the funds in order to bring Raul Jimenez in. 
So I'm not really going to overthink this too much. And I will be bringing in Emil Smith Rowe for Semenyo, assuming that we don't get any confirmed message from Arteta, which is a clear sucker is out. Which, let's be honest, Arteta is never going to give us that bit of information. But let's just say that he does, and for some reason Saka is out and Arteta actually tells us that. I will probably, I will actually end up holding on to Semenyo in that case. I will have to play him in this Arsenal fixture. And I will probably just jump straight across to Cole Palmer. Is the other, only other option is Sun. You know, don't, his son's still flagged and has been injured for a little while. You know, he could very much be back this week and um, Spurs do have four very nice fixtures. But I am running a little bit blind on Sun. I haven't seen him play a hell of a lot this season. Actually, like I mentioned in the last video. And I will be jumping across to Palmer anyway. And so I think even though the fixtures are a little bit tough for Chelsea, I mean, they would have to play at Liverpool this weekend but Liverpool are without Allison in net and so I definitely think Palmer could come away with a goal in that game Newcastle the following week then I think it's Manchester United is it <clears throat> no it's Chelsea so Liverpool away without Allison Newcastle at home Chelsea can definitely score in that game Manchester United Chelsea might win that game by three or four goals based on how Man United have been lately then they do have a really tough game in game week 11 at home to Arsenal. But then the run of fixtures from game week 12 onwards for Chelsea is just, I'm going to be getting Palmer into my team at that point. And I'll be selling Saka next week anyway for Palmer. Uh, don't think I'll be holding on to Saka, even though the fixtures do turn very nice for Arsenal in game week 12. But in selling Saka for Palmer, that does open the door for Havertz. Um, which I will probably be going from Solanke to Havertz in and around game week 12 when Spurs have to play City away, Fulham at home, Bournemouth away, and Chelsea at home. So that's my tentative pre uh, transfers over the coming weeks. I do need a little bit more information to see what I'm going to do with my final transfer. But that's about it. And that wraps up this video. So don't forget to like and subscribe and leave us a comment to tell us what you think. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all again next time.